Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly education around here at Seclair, where we attempt to offer a little bit of commentary on uh, society and what type of interactions that people can have. And uh, I'm Jim Ellermeyer, and of course, Seclair is an integrati integrative holistic uh, psychiatric facility where we treat people, we do not treat diagnoses. <laughs> and today, what we're going to talk about is obsession. We're going to talk about celebrity obsession. And particularly, we're going to start off with this selfish, the selfie obsession, which is, uh, according to psychology, is a chronic narcissistic disorder. And I found a uh, quote that would fit these young ladies quite nicely uh, from 21st Century Wire of 4.12.13 that says if smartphones were pawns, a large portion of our population would have already drowned. So with you two, I'm going to throw you both life preservers and you can come up to the surf. You can get surface. You can come back and join us. So again, I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And today I'm joined by two of my uh, self-obsessed colleagues. On my left would be... <laughs> Becca. And Becca is a physician assistant. Student okay. At I thought I, I thought you were at the circus. Mm -hmm. And you're on my right would be I'm Robin. I'm a physician assistant student from Chatham University. Okay. You sure you're not at the circus? You're the one who shoots yes. her out of the cannon? Okay. <laughs> well, t again, uh, today we're making a little funnies, which is, of course is uh, just a great thing. So tell me a little tell me a little bit. We were talking earlier before we started recording about the selfies. Tell me tell me about these things. Uh, what about selfies? Um <laughs> I don't take selfies, actually. Basically, but it's whenever you take a picture of yourself, and then you post it online, and you want people to like it and look at your picture and say how nice you are and beautiful you are, and basically that's it. You want okay. to try to be popular. You want to try to be popular mm -hmm. by taking pictures of yourself mm -hmm. and, and putting them out for other people mm -hmm. to see who may not even want to see them. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, then that makes you popular? Um, okay, great. Some people. Okay, great, great. So what we're talking about is, is compulsion and basically celebrity worship. And what we're doing is with these selfies, we're seeking fame. Mm -hmm. Are we not mm -hmm. seeking mm -hmm. fame? So the last time you two were in a uh, checkout line, uh, what was what was all the magazine covers? What were they saying? What was on the covers? Who, who cheated on him? Who's getting <laughs> divorced? Who had a baby? Uh -huh. Who lost weight? Who gained weight? <laughs> so were these pictures of your next door neighbor or were they... Uh, mm. They're, they're celebrities. Who, who, who have celebrities. So what? What was a celebrity? What was what is a celebrity? I'm interested. Uh, people that everybody know. People who have supposedly done something meaningful to make them okay. famous. Well, quite often, uh, Becca, don't we get famous simply by being famous? Yeah, some For people. For example, do. let's say a Paris Hilton or a Kim Kardashian or an individual like that. Mm -hmm. Right, just simply by being famous. Housewives, wherever. Housewives, I, I, <laughs> again, again, certainly. So, what it does is, it certainly, is what it does is it makes it difficult for real life heroes, heroes like firemen, police officers, first responders to compete. Does it not? That was a big topic, actually, with um, recently with the whole Caitlyn Jenner thing coming out. If you go on Facebook, a lot of people you would see uh, making comments about the fact that. You know, they don't think it's right that Caitlyn Jenner is being called a hero for, you know, being himself, herself, and coming out to who they truly are. And it's taking away from the people, uh, like firefighters who go into burning buildings and rescue people, or police officers who really put their lives on the, lives on the lines every day. And so that has actually been a really, really big discussion. Well, sure, and Becca, uh, human worship's nothing new. People have always looked for a higher power to idolize and worship. In, in their lives, most certainly. Uh, however, uh, when it becomes when it becomes a compulsion, and celebrity worships especially disturbing among female adolescents uh, between let's say between the ages of fourteen and sixteen, quite often these young girls seek role models, and that results in a, a poor self image, a poor body image when they're compared to people who have access to photoshopping the the clothes, all the accessories. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, basically, they see celebrities online or in magazines that have these perfect bodies, and um, they can't attain the same thing, and then they get upset about how they look, and um, they're never happy with themselves. Sure. Have you ever known anybody like that? Have you ever dealt with anybody like that in your life, Robin? Um... I, you know, I probably without realizing it, I have, um... I mean, I've known people, yeah, I, I can say I've known people who have been, like, obsessed on making sure that they are, like, super skinny or, 
you know, just, or people who want to feel like they're famous like everybody else, so they feel like, oh, a famous person posted what they had for dinner tonight, so I have to go on Facebook and post mm-hmm. what I had for dinner tonight. Well, sure, yeah. and following celebrities can be a, can be a, a simple, even healthy pastime, often like following technology or following a sports team. Uh, following the latest trends in fashion or or world news, whatever like. However, when we begin to take the focus off our own lives again and focus on others, then it then it becomes an unhealthy obsession, an unhealthy obsession. So, talk to me a little bit about these seeking fame and these reality shows. I've actually I've never seen one. So, could you tell me what they are? Um. What, what do you mean? A reality show. They tell me there's reality shows on TV. Oh, basically they put their real life on TV and everybody watches it. And then you see like their struggles and it's supposed to be unedited and everything like that. But behind the scenes, it's really not. Well, certainly. Can you comment on that, Robin? Oh, I think, yeah. I think it's, it's basically like that they try to provoke drama and try to keep it entertaining whether it really is or isn't so like uh, Becca said with the editing and it's just I think people want to see the drama and all the problems and troubles that other people are having to kind of distract them from their own lives so so what quite often we hear see people coming in for Seclair for help with is there are a whole lot of underlying issues that deal with self-esteem self-identity and identity formation Identity formation is something that most people don't know. So when we're looking at these magazine covers and we're looking at the selfies and we're looking at all these glamorous type of shots, what happens is it's like a building, okay? When we have a building, uh, all the bells and whistles, the fancy stuff is on the outside, the inside where people can see them, can they not? Where, uh, as any construction uh, contractor will tell you, that the most important part of any building is the the foundation is the foundation that's correct well so quite often that's what we do here is we have to go down into the basement and we have to rebuild the foundation of the home or refill the foundation of the person do we not yep and I'm sure that I'm sure that the time that you've been here you've done it so how do we do that how, do, how, how does that happen well we t- tell people to stop focusing on everything else and start focusing on themselves and you know, worry about what's right in front of them, right here, right now, as you like to say, and not, you know, all the drama that's going on around them, what other people expect of them. They can't, they can't worry about everybody else. They have to worry about themselves and you start, start seeing who they are. So what happens, uh, Becca, is when we start to compare ourselves with other people, especially celebrities and living a life that we don't know, maybe a lot of illusion, that all we can find in ourselves is our character defects and our weaknesses and our challenges, is it not? Mm -hmm. So when we focus on our character defects and our weaknesses and our challenges, that just leads to more anxiety, more depression, uh, decreasing self-esteem. Whereas what we like to do is help people identify their gifts, talents, and abilities. And every single human being on earth has them. all different shapes, all different sizes, all different colors. And it's not through begging, pleading, crying, screaming, yelling, threatening that you get those out. It's through encouragement and support. Mm -hmm. Encouragement and support. That, you know, by telling somebody that they're going to be the next Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton or or an astronaut or whatever may not be that realistic, okay? What we try to help people to do is to live up to their their best potential, to be a a self-actualizer. Okay, to deal with what they have in in present time, so it's action and effort in the present that make a that make a future possible, is it not? Mm-hmm. And this is what we we certainly assist on helping people. Now, don't uh, please don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, getting down on young people of today or that. There was quite often when I people come in and complain to me about all oh, these young people, blah blah blah. I read them a I read them a passage and I say, and the passage basically what it says is, all oh, these young people of today, they're they're, they're so impulsive. They're lazy. They talk back to people. They all they they're they're just so in, entitled and they're impulsive and all they all they self grandizing and they're they're all they want is for themselves. And this person says yes yes yes. And I says you know who wrote that? And they says no. I said it was Socrates back in back in ancient Greece. He was writing about the, the youth of Athens. So it's not that much different than it is today. Okay. So the idea is though what we look at is when technology begins to own us and we do not own it okay when we walk in down the street and we see people taking the selfies and they run into telephone poles 
<laughs> okay, um, or they or they trip on the sidewalk. Mm. I'm sure that you've seen that. Maybe you've done that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so the idea here is when where, when does it cross the line? When does when does when does it become an order? So what we do is we look at the intensity, the frequency, and the durations of the symptoms that we suffer as a result of our obsession with anything. Whether it's whether it's cell phones or whether it's computers, whether it's flipping coins, whether it's following the Pittsburgh Pirates or whatever. When does, when does it begin to interfere with your life and your social life and your school life and your work life? That's that's what we look at when it becomes upset. Or when people come in here, uh, most people come in here with a whole lot of relationship issues when other people uh, can't uh, relate to them or they can't relate to other people. Okay, and I'm hoping that by perhaps sharing some of this today, we begin, we can look back and become the observer behind that thinker, become the observer behind the technology, become the observer behind the pack. And uh, Robin, you know that we are kind of indeed hardwired to follow the alpha male, mm -hmm. although sometimes uh, it would be nice uh, if we could find the uh, the alpha for ourselves, could we not? Rather than have the media tell us who it is, or this is how we should portray ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, as of every podcast, what we do is we ask folks and we instruct them on how to uh, be able to comment, uh, get questions, any type of criticism. All is uh, all is helpful. Okay. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. Um, you can also find this and other Grand Rounds on youtube.com slash video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles um, on our great blog. And as usual, we have our free app prescription at the end of every podcast. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask you to fish without bait, a life without expectations. And as always, your assignment is to be good to yourself. And if you haven't taken any of your selfies, you can send them to me, Jim Ellermeyer, Jim at Seclair.com. Thank you so much. Smile, <laughs> <laughs>